Continuing coverage of the possible Trump indictment with our national correspondents, Mike Carter, live in Bedminster, New Jersey, and Logan Raddick is live at the courthouse in D.C. But first, let's go to Mike Carter in Bedminster. Mike. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Well, as Donald Trump's lawyers could be spotted, meeting with uh, special counsel Jack Smith's team this morning to discuss this possible third indictment. Donald Trump, well, he took to the golf course here at Trump National in Bedminster, New Jersey, his summertime home, and a golf course expected to host the Live Golf Tour in about two weeks' time from now. It'll be a busy weekend for the former president as he plans a series of campaign events starting tomorrow in Iowa. Donald Trump will be heading to Iowa on Friday to meet with supporters at his campaign office opening in Urbandale, Iowa. That's before the former president plans to speak at the Iowa Republican Party's annual Lincoln Dinner alongside almost all of the 2024 GOP candidates, with the exception of former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who does not plan on campaigning in Iowa. Right now, the former president is enjoying and maintaining a nearly 30-point lead over Ron DeSantis in new polling out of the Hawkeye state this week of likely GOP voters, even in the face of this latest pending indictment. And Donald Trump's stop in Iowa comes one day before he'll be heading to the Keystone State, Pennsylvania. Donald Trump holding a Trump rally, a classic Trump rally, Saturday night in Erie, Pennsylvania. Of course, the looming indictment hanging over all of these campaign events as we head into the weekend. Bob? Mike, thank you very much. Let's go to Logan Raddick now, live at the D.C. courthouse. Logan. Well, Bob and Katrina, we're still waiting for some news here at the courthouse. What I can tell you is that there is a ton of media outside, both in front of the courthouse to the side of the courthouse, really all surrounding the courthouse. People are waiting for a potential indictment of former President Donald Trump in this special counsel investigation from special counsel Jack Smith. Now, the grand jury is meeting right now. They're hearing more evidence, seeing more evidence. But again, uh, it's unclear if an indictment will come today. Former President Donald Trump's lawyers did meet with special counsel Jack Smith for about an hour this morning. They were not given any indication as to the timing of a potential indictment. But what we do also know at this moment is that former President Donald Trump is commenting on the media coverage of this today and the situation at hand. He put on his social media platform, Truth Social, the following post saying, quote, my attorneys had a productive meeting with the DOJ this morning explaining in detail that I did nothing wrong, was advised by many lawyers, and that an indictment of me would only further destroy our country. No indication of notice was given during this meeting. So again, the grand jury is meeting in the courthouse right behind me. And if an indictment does come down today, we'll bring it to you right as it comes out. Back to you. Hey, Logan, quick question for you. Do you see around you any more presence uh, from uh, police officers in the area? We know that there's been some heads up given uh, uh, possibly to some of those people that secure our safety. That is a good point, Bob. And actually, there was a little bit of a huddle with some officers off to the side earlier today. Not clear what that was all about, but that is another indication that we could have an indictment come down today. There's also uh, police cars that are right across from the courthouse, in between the courthouse and the Canadian Embassy, which is right across the way. So with the bolstering of security here, that is another sign that we could get an indictment any moment now. All right, Logan Raddick, uh, as you said, this indictment does seem imminent at this point. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, also uh, joining us now, we have uh, Mark Halperin, a political analyst, and we also have um, Doug Collins, of course, former congressman in Georgia, and also uh, happens to be a lawyer. So we're going to probably ask you to put your legal hat on here for us a little bit. Thanks, Doug. All righty. All right. First of all, you know, I, I want to start with you, Mark. Um, you know, again, we, we've been talking about this. When is the indictment going to happen? If one does happen, it seems like everybody is ready for one at any moment. Are your sources on the inside giving you any intel? I know you're very well connected. Well, yesterday and this morning, uh, there were people close to this investigation who thought it would be today and, and leaned into that as a prospect. Uh, I've not gotten that confirmed in the last couple hours since the meeting that President Trump's lawyers had at Justice. It's significant that they came out of that reportedly not being told that it was imminent, imminent. But I still, if you were a betting person, if you're at Ladbrokes or in Vegas, uh, I'd bet on today or tomorrow, maybe leaning, given the hour, a little bit more towards tomorrow. For security purposes, for, for, um, for crowd control purposes, uh, we've always been told these things are more likely to happen 
towards the end of the week and toward later in the day rather than in the heart of the workday. Yeah, politically speaking, uh, Doug, I'm guessing that this administration would like to have Hunter's story off the front page, at least over the weekend. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, they would like to have Hunter's story off the page forever if they could. I mean, this is just, I mean, yesterday was a disaster for them because now they're having to deal with it even further. But, you know, I want to point out something, and, and I'm, I'm wondering if Mark would agree with me on this. It is disturbing to me that how we refer to prosecutors and judges as by who they were appointed by. And, and John Pierre kept saying that today. This is a Trump appointed, you know, a, a, a U.S. attorney and do this as if implying that there is some kind of a bias or some kind of a motive simply because who they're appointed. Now, we all understand that they would be more leaning toward a certain administration for the appointment. But to do that, I think, undermines and, and that, that's a subtle undermining of the U.S. attorney in this case. And I think trying to, to state that, well, it's all going to be they're trying to say, well, since it's Trump, it must be good. Or since it's a Biden appointee, it must be bad. That we've got to get away from here. But look, yeah, the Biden administration would do you know most anything right now to get Hunter Biden off the headline. Also, we want to bring in uh, former federal prosecutor Doug Burns, who is joining us here in studio. Um, Doug, great to have you with us. We do want to get your insights here. What is standing out to you as we watch what can, in my opinion, can only be described as a circus about to come to town? Yeah, it is a circus <laughs> about to come to town. But first, I want to uh, say thanks for that last point, because in 38 years, almost never do we ever say, this judge is this political party, or this judge was appointed by that president. I mean, it just doesn't happen in the day-to-day -day case. So it was such an important point that was just made. And by the way, you're just breathlessly impugning everybody's integrity right out of the gate. Oh, that one was appointed by this one. Mm -hmm. Fill it out. So and by the way, the Trump yeah. appointees have thrown roadblocks in him on, on other cases. So right. it, it's not like they, they're a rubber stamp on anything he's done. Not at all. But think how cavalier it is. Oh, I'm just glibly suggesting they can't possibly be fair because they That's were being point. appointed on this side. It was a great point that uh, Congressman Collins made, so I wanted to say that. As far as the situation itself, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but I agree that it's very likely that it'll be late in the day tomorrow. That's my best crystal ball on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, okay. and I think that, you know, last point, too. When somebody's charged in a white-collar case, guys, not organized crime, not narcotics, you don't see a re-prosecution, okay? What happens is the second district gets with the first district and says, hi, we have this case, and they coordinate it, and they say, okay, you may want to hold that back as an insurance policy. Because, by the way, Department of Justice regulations say you do a re-prosecution only if justice is not vindicated in the first case. So this is really theater of the absurd to bring two cases against them. All right, uh, let's uh, address this. Te uh, Ted Cruz, uh, Texas senator, was on Newsmax last night. He had this to say about the pending Trump indictment. What about a Trump indictment? What are your thoughts on that, sir? Yeah. Look, I, I think a Trump indictment would be an abuse of power. I think each of the Trump indictments we've seen so far are abuses of power. They are politicizing the Justice Department. This Department of Justice, this Attorney General, this FBI is the most politicized and weaponized we've ever seen. The Democrats hate democracy. They are deathly afraid the voters will choose to elect Donald Trump. They don't want that to happen, and so they are trying to use the machinery of law enforcement to prosecute him. Doug, your thoughts? Yeah, I think right here is, is that's what the perception has become now, the politicization of oh, so I'm much Oh, I'm sorry. Of this. We've got... It, it's just... <laughs> By the way, we have two Dougs. So. Right. <laughs> Doug, Doug Burns, Collins. Doug yeah. Burns just went... You see how I yeah. laid back? <laughs> Nicely, right, Bob? I, I, I appreciate that. Doug Burns. I defer. <laughs> no, that I was defer, for you, Doug, Doug Collins. I you, believe. Doug Collins. Yeah. Thank you, sir. No, no, I think, thanks for that. Hey, look, I, I think that's becoming the problem here, is there's this being seen as more of a political uh, outlet. And it's been going on for a long time. Somebody pointed this out the other day, that these, some of these investigations have been going on for, you know, uh, years now. And, and again, in these kind of cases, you, you bring it to a conclusion, you find a solution, you either bring the charges, don't bring the charges. It's just been dragging on to where people, I think now, uh, uh, they're viewing it that. You're seeing it in the polls. You're seeing it in people's reaction to this, that, you know, the, these are not being viewed as is something that would normally be done. And they're asking the question, could resources be used in other places to, you know, combat 
combat what they are viewing as real troubling crime in some of our places, in our, some of our cities. And Trump, and every time Trump is indicted here, the people, it's just become almost like a, if you have a scab on your hand, it becomes, you know, uh, the this the part where it just keeps going over. They just don't have the same sensitivity as they did the, the first time it ever happened. Uh, Mark Halperin, uh, t take us to the finish line here. Um, your prediction, <laughs> what do you anticipate? Well, look, Senator Cruz's uh, voice is representative of what we'll hear from the Republican side. As you know, the Democrats have largely tried to stay out of this. I continue to say, let's get the indictment. I think the two counselors would agree with me. Let's see what it says. A lot of speculation, but mm -hmm. let's see the, the, the right. facts, the crimes that are charged, and let's see what the evidence is. The Mar-a-Lago documents case had some pretty surprising evidence. Let's see what this one has. All right. Well, we, of course, all will be watching. Mark Halperin, Doug Collins, thanks so much. Doug Burns, stick around. Thank you.